Tonight, I just want to review uh, where, where I started last week, and we'll get right into this. Uh, I can see I grabbed the wrong device. This is actually my phone. This is actually my Bible. <laughs> so, last week I started with Romans 1.17, and we'll see if it goes up on the screen front or back. It's, it's up there. You can see it. All right. So we see here, as my device is warming up, this scripture tells us, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith. Last week I pointed out it doesn't say the, the just shall live by grace. So we know the difference between grace and faith. There, and there is a difference. Grace, God's grace, is everything he's already provided for you. He's already promised you and made available to you because of what Jesus did through his death, burial, and resurrection. That's grace. But it takes faith to appropriate that grace. So you've got to have faith and grace together to receive God's greatest blessing, which is salvation through Christ. So if you're going to receive from God the most important thing, then it seems likely that you're going to receive other things that are also important in the same way. So you have to understand who you are in Christ, what you have, what is made available to you in Christ, and then developing your faith around receiving that. Not just believing that God's provided it, but that you as a child of God can benefit from those things by receiving them by faith and using those things to fulfill God's plan for your life. Because God knows we need help, right? <laughs> you can't fulfill God's plan for your life without grace. You just can't. There's some things you can't do out of your natural abilities that only the Spirit can do, right? All right, so we talked about that a little bit last week. Also, understand that as a believer, the Word of God must be final authority in your life. So, the life of faith in God will result in you walking in victory. This is why Pastor Mac has, you know, the magazine. He used to have the magazine, The Winner's Way. Now, he, he has a broadcast on BVOVN, uh, Copeland's network, and it's called The Winner's Way. Because Pastor Mac, if you know him... He is a visionary, and he's focused on being a winner in every area of life. And usually, whether he starts a service following one track, he almost always ends up, if you've noticed, he almost always ends up you being a winner in life. And he wouldn't do that if he felt that we were already all winners. <laughs> right? We don't te keep teaching our children how to eat if after a while we see that they can eat by themselves. So there's a reason that he continually feeds us that. It's because it needs to get on the inside of us and we need to understand the balance between faith and grace to be able to fulfill God's plan for our life. And you'll find the more you grow in the word that you can't take just one doctrine and live your Christian life based on one doctrine because they're all intertwined like you could be highly developed in faith but if you don't have love faith and love faith works by love yes. so that means you have to become developed in love just as much as you're developed in faith and as you go on you begin to see other other things that begin you can't receive salvation just by faith it takes grace. Well, he gives grace to the humble. So that means now you've got to learn about humility, which is a characteristic of Christ, in order to understand how grace is being made available to you. In that scripture, you also, you also understand that um, when he gives you grace, he also resists the proud. 
So that means we need to understand some things about the potential for having pride in our life, which cuts off the grace that would be available to us. You know, when you get saved, you're saved spiritually. You're a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. He didn't just take care of everything in your life when you received salvation. You still wear the same kind of clothes. You still have some of the same kind of attitudes. You know, if, if you could use your faith to receive salvation and it took care of everything, then you could believe God that you don't have to use soap when you shower anymore. Just ignore that for about a month. See how that works for you. <laughs> right? You wouldn't have to eat anymore. Well, the fact is, he took care of you spiritually. He took care of your spirit. He redeemed your spirit. He died for you because all of us have sinned. And the penalty of sin is death. So he died so that we wouldn't have to die, so that we could have life, eternal life. Right? But we have responsibility in this relationship we have with God. He doesn't just do everything for us. Like we have to renew our minds to the Word of God. You notice when you get saved, your mind's not renewed. You still have some ugly things you're thinking. Like I said before, you might have to deal with some unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, things like that, that enter your thought life. And the Bible is a, a manual for life that shows you how to remove those things. But you still have to be responsible to do it. It's not even my responsibility as a pastor to remove your unforgiveness. I point to Larry. I'm not, I'm not suggesting, Larry, that that's, <laughs> that that's you. <clears throat> But we all have issues um, that we have to deal with, that deals with our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions. We also have issues that, that deal with our physical body. He doesn't renew our physical body at the point that we receive salvation. You still have the same body that you had before you prayed to receive Christ. But he does have the instruction manual that you can read, renew your mind to, and it'll help you take care of your body. Right? Does this make sense? You guys are really quiet tonight. Okay. Are you guys awake way over there in the shadows? <laughs> I see some people I know over there. They're, they're shadow dwellers. <laughs> okay. I'm preaching better than you're reacting. Right? Oh, Miss Sharon, you can go ahead and... You can go ahead and play while I'm talking. I don't know what she's going to play, but it's going to be good. I've got my faith out there for that tonight. <clears throat> All right, so let's go to the second verse that I had last week, and that was Romans 10, 17. I think that's all the further I got. And we all know this. This is how you begin to increase your faith or develop your faith. The Bible tells us, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So, if you meditate on this for a minute, you understand that your faith has to be in God. So it has to be in His Word. You can develop faith in someone else's words. Maybe if you need healing for your body, it would be easy to develop your faith in what the doctor is telling you to do. And if he runs tests, he or she runs tests, and those tests confirm what the doctor told you, it'd be easy to put your faith in what they're saying. But what does the great physician say? What does, what does God say about your situation? If you, if you begin to put your faith in the Word of God and develop your faith and strengthen your faith and not put so much credibility in the doctor's report, then what happens? Your faith begins to be active. And there are things that you need to do that will activate your faith or cause it to grow and become stronger and stronger so that these outside influences don't take you off the track that God wants you to follow, right? 
So don't put your faith in your problem. We know that there's a scripture, there's several scriptures that talk about how out of the abundance of the heart the man speaks. You can locate people by how they're talking about their life circumstances. If you, if you greet them in the lobby of the church and they've got a coffee in their hand and all they're doing is talking to everybody about their problems, then you can understand why they have problems. They've got their faith very developed, but it's in developed in the wrong thing, <laughs> right? They've got a lot of faith that they're gonna have problems the rest of their life. And you know what? Faith will work. The laws of faith will work for you regardless. You can develop it in the area of the Word of God so that you can have faith in God or you can develop it in develop your faith in the world system. You can depend on our congressmen and senators and people that work in the government to make decisions that are going to take care of you the rest of your life. Yikes. It's hard to see them even coming together to get anything done. I, it's easier for me to have faith in God to take care of me than the government to take care of me, right? So we need to be developing our faith all the time for all the different areas of our life because these are areas that we are responsible for. All right, so faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Develop faith in God's Word and you'll overcome every problem, every situation, every circumstance. That's the promise of God's Word. Now, let's go to Joshua 1.8. Now, we all, we've all heard these scriptures. If, if you've heard Pastor Mac teach anything about faith, you've heard some of these scriptures. Joshua 1.8 tells us this. I love this scripture. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now, we have a pastor at our church years ago that was teaching on this verse. <laughs> and here's, here's what he said. He got so excited about this scripture. Some of you know who he is. And he said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good sex. And when he said that, it just went totally quiet. <laughs> crickets. You can hear crickets. <laughs> and then he turned beet red. He realized what he had said. It, this says you shall have good success, right? <laughs> that other area, that's, that's a totally separate area, and I'm not going to deal with that tonight. We'll leave that up to Pastor Mac. <clears throat> but what's interesting to me about this verse, it... When I, when I used to read this, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, it seemed to say, don't talk about it. But that's not what it's saying. It's saying, keep it in your mouth so that when a time arises that where you need to speak it out, you're ready to speak the word of God, right? So this is talking about how confession and meditation will cause you, you make your way prosperous, and you have good success. Notice it doesn't say that God makes you prosperous. It says you make your way prosperous. And since you have control over your tongue and your mouth, you're the one that does the confession. You're the one that does the meditation. And as a result, you will prosper and you will have good success. See, there's some things that God's responsible for, but there's some things you're responsible for. And if you don't obey the word and do it, then you're going to fall short in this area. So meditation goes hand in hand. Confession goes hand in hand with developing your faith in order for you to receive the benefit of every blessing he's promised you in his word. Okay? Are, are we tracking together tonight? You're okay? All right. Let's, uh, I'll tell you, when you go on missions trips, um, I'll just share this with you. I wish Pastor Nick was here because he tells this story really well. I, it cracks me up. But every time I prepare to go on the mission field, in the natural, 
I just begin to build myself up in faith in certain areas because you know when you go on the mission field things aren't like they are here in America you're gonna eat different food you're gonna have different kinds of accommodations uh, you're gonna experience some things that you've never experienced at home but how many have been on a mission trip here I see the Hoxmeyers over here yeah am I telling the truth right you might be served something that you've never eaten before in your life so what are you gonna do if the people that you're visiting in their home are giving you their best and they've taken time to prepare a special meal for you and they take the cover off this basket and it's roasted termites what are you gonna do I know most Americans what they would do they reach in their backpack and pull out a candy bar right <laughs> They've got, they've got the, uh, the 7-Eleven diet, chips and bars. Um, but I begin confessing the Word of God over me so that when these kinds of situations arise, I know I can eat anything and it won't hurt me. It does. Hey, my sister's in agreement here with the Word of God. <laughs> yes. So when you get put in a situation, you may not like to see what you're going to eat but there's a piece on the inside that no matter what it is that served you it's gonna be good you receive it with Thanksgiving and you bless it and you'll be just fine so Pastor Nick teases me we went to a restaurant in Santiago Chile we had an evangelism team down there um, and the place was packed um, but we went into this restaurant it was it was like a little burger joint and everyone decided they wanted to have a burger and some fries and you know something to drink um, so they came out with all these burgers and served us and um, I started to eat mine and it it was fine pastor Nick took one bite out of his hamburger and he 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 sat back from the table and he said I, I can't eat this this thing this thing tastes really bad uh, Doug Parker was there he said yeah I think it's a llama burger <laughs> And they're all making jokes about it and I'm just going ahead eating my food and pastor pastor uh, Nick just ended up wrapping up the burger and asked for a like a, a little thing to take it out so he could take it out of the restaurant and maybe give it to someone else on the street and uh, I was the only one that actually finished the meal and everything was fine we paid for it went out on the street pastor Nick found a man that he looked like he had been living on the street so he offered him this meal there were still french fries left and about you know three-fourths of the burger he cut away the piece he had started to gnaw on and so um, he gave it to the man thinking that this guy would be so pleased and so full of joy to receive a meal and the guy smelled it and folded the paper back up close <laughs> and handed it back to <laughs> and he started laughing and um, then a few minutes later he saw this dog walk in kind of nosing along sniffing things and so he put this thing down on the ground for the dog even the dog turned away <laughs> and so that's what happens if you don't prepare yourself in advance by confessing the word meditating in the word I was just fine didn't have any problems at all and so now we go on trips where uh, well Paul over here I see Paul you know this in China and Thailand places like that they eat scorpions and all kinds of worms bamboo worms and crickets and grasshoppers and all kinds of different things um, but they won't hurt you they'll actually provide you nutrition if you receive it with Thanksgiving bless it and thank God for it he'll take care of it Beverly's even eaten a couple things pretty wild outside the box <laughs> we have a place in China that we call the fear factor buffet that we <laughs> we like to challenge our team members that go and see just how how much in faith they really are okay I better get going here all right so let's turn to Philippians or to Psalm chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 see what this says all right I love this scripture it says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners 
nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. All right. Meditating in the Word of God. It positions you spiritually. It's just as if you're like a tree planted by rivers. Notice it's plural. Rivers of living water. You could also say streams of living water. We know the Bible, when, it, when you see references that pertain to water, it's almost always a reference to the Holy Spirit. Now you think about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and all the things the Holy Spirit does in His ministry through us and for us. He's our teacher, He's our comforter, He's our advocate, all these different things. He gives us wisdom, uh, He gives us revelation. All these different things could each be a different stream that you're planted by. So when you begin to meditate on the Word of God, what happens? you begin to receive the benefit of the stream of wisdom flowing into your life so that you have wisdom to deal with situations and circumstances that arise. Does that make sense? It could be a, a stream of healing that begins to flow into your life. A stream of prosperity. It, it's unlimited the number of streams. Think about how many streams feed the Mississippi River. It's not just one or two. There's hundreds and hundreds of streams that feed the Mississippi River until it gets down to the Gulf of Mexico. And in your life, you can be positioned spiritually to benefit from each and every stream of the Spirit. Now, I'm speaking something I hadn't really planned to speak, but it's because of you. You're <laughs> You're, you're igniting something on the inside of me and drawing things out. Isn't that awesome? It, it's awesome how anointings work together to bring the kind of results that God's looking for, the kind of things that need to take place so that everyone can receive something. It's awesome. All right, let's go to Romans 10.8. <clears throat> All right, it says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That word is the word of faith which we preach. Okay, so the word, the word of God, the word of faith is always near us. It's, it's in us. It's in our mouth and it's in our heart. And that's why from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? So you begin reading the Word, which is really a part of renewing your mind to the Word of God. You don't want to be conformed to the world because the world's meditating on all the problems that are going on. We don't want to be conformed to the world or the world's system. We want to be transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we learn to live separate from the world system because the world system doesn't work for Christians doesn't really work for anyone, <laughs> right? It doesn't. It's just that most people don't realize that. So they, they keep trying to figure out the world system and figure out how to benefit from it. But the problem is the world system doesn't benefit you. Actually, what it does is it steals from you. It robs you of all the blessings and promises of God. And so as a child of God, when we get saved, we are taken from the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of light so that we're no longer under the authority of the world system. We've been removed from that so that now we're under the authority of the kingdom of God. And so the book, the Bible, is for us to learn. We read it, we meditate on it, we confess it, we learn how the system, how the, the principles of God work in our life so that we can benefit from everything He's provided for us. And in that system, He gives us everything that we need. In other words, He makes it available 
to all of us but then we have responsibility to learn how to receive it otherwise what he's given doesn't benefit us you know the, the Word of God and salvation through Christ is, has already been given to every man woman and child but not every man woman and child will receive it because they don't understand the principle behind it so it's possible to be born in this into this world and because you have no knowledge of God's kingdom you can live your whole life and never experience God in any area of your life that is so sad but it helps us to realize that we do we do have a responsibility and part of our responsibility is not only to grow in the knowledge of this so that it benefits us but grow to a point of maturity where we realize we need to give what we've been given we need to share it with other people we need to take it outside the walls of the church because God loves everyone not just believers right hallelujah keep going Sharon keep going <laughs> <laughs> so this word of faith is in our mouth we confess it and it's in our heart that's how we release it is through our confession that's how we receive Christ if you go over to Romans 10 9 and 10 it talks to you about how to receive Christ it's a product of confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus believing in your heart that he did what the Bible said he did and you believe that with your heart and it says you will be saved it's not a complicated thing it's very simple all it takes is one simple decision that can change your life forever and yet it's available to everyone but yet many people never have brought to that point have been brought to that point of decision or they don't know what to do when they are brought to that point so some of this becomes our responsibility amen all right James 2 26 I'm not sure I even had that on the list of scriptures for you to put up on the <laughs> is it there no not yet I still haven't opened my Bible yet Tell me if you see it pop up there. It's up there now. Okay. James 2, 26. <clears throat> it says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. All right, so one of the responsibilities that we have, even though we're developing faith, we have to do something with that faith. It has to be put to work. Now, realize... <laughs> that could be confusing to some people because people think that um, for example there's some religious people that believe that salvation is a product of all the good things that you do and they consider that your good works in order to receive salvation the assurance of your salvation well that's not the works that it's talking about here because the Bible specifically tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 8 9 and 10 that we're not saved because of our good works so the confusion is in determining how this works we are to put our faith to work but that's not what guarantees receiving salvation through Christ or it's not really how you receive anything from God through your good works it's by faith and grace that you receive all the blessings from God but you do need to exercise your faith in order for it to become stronger and so some of the things that you do to exercise your faith is being quick to hear his word and quick to do his word be a hearer and a doer because you're proving to him then that you're being obedient to his word so as you're obedient to confess the word it's helping to strengthen your faith you hear yourself speak the word you hear pastor Max speak the word you hear the Spirit of God sometimes speak a word to you and you're to act on that you're supposed to do something with that don't don't just let it pass away and forget about it but there's a reason the Spirit of God speaks things to you uh, the Bible is his general 
counsel for your life. This is, this is general instruction for your life. But the Holy Spirit will speak to you about very sp specific things that you're never going to be able to find verse, chapter and verse for. And these things are, are vital to you fulfilling the things he's called you to do because you need specifics. In other words, you could read in the Bible or, or maybe uh, someone that's, that's uh, teaching a message all of a sudden has a word that's given to them by the Spirit and the word says, I want you to move to Florida. Well, if everybody just receives that by faith, well, where in Florida are you going to move? When does he want you to move there? Gen you can't live your life as a Christian with this general instruction. The general instruction is for you to lay a solid foundation on the Word of God, but the Spirit of God gives you specifics so that you can begin to build up. All right? And so, as you, as you begin to be a doer of the Word, um, it causes things to begin to happen in your life. I've always liked the idea of being quick to hear and quick to respond to the Spirit. Quick to hear, quick to do. Quick to hear, quick to act. <clears throat> because these are, these are things that are specific and they're, there's usually a time that's, a, that's associated with that. He wants you to do this at a certain point. It might be right now. In some situations, um, I've had several situations where I've been driving along just kind of singing in the Spirit or whatever. I'll be going along and up ahead is a green light so I know I can go through the intersection uh, right over here off of Lakeland and Brooklyn Boulevard. A number of years ago I was driving along like that, coming into the office. And all of a sudden the Spirit speaks to me with a loud voice, stop! And immediately I hit the brakes just as a dump truck ran the intersection. Now what would have happened if I had not trained myself to be quick to hear and quick to obey. If I had not trained myself to not only hear the voice of the Spirit, but recognize His voice, so that a time in the future when I need to hear from Him, I'll be able to separate off all the other sounds, all the other voices, the things that confuse you, so that you just focus on the Word that the Spirit is speaking. Sometimes it could save your life. I think it did in that situation. Sometimes it's not for you, but it's actually for someone else that you respond to, and it saves their life. But the more that you develop this, the more significant it becomes. You'll, you'll find that He puts you in different situations because you've learned how to respond immediately to the voice of the Spirit. And the same is true with you that have children. You raise your children to immediately obey what you say. You, you don't let them slide and take three days to do what you ask them to do. You need to train them to hear your voice, respect it, honor it, and do what you ask them to do. Because at some point in the future, it may affect them in a negative way if they don't learn that lesson. It's not that you're being a cruel parent. Training, teaching is one thing. Training involves discipline right and you know as a parent you've got to discipline your children why am I saying this <laughs> and I'm looking at I'm looking at Larry again are you and Carol gonna have more kids or what <laughs> I don't think that was by this spirit that was me <laughs> Carol is he right you're, you're not planning any okay all right James 1.25, let's see what that says. Ooh, hallelujah. All right. I don't think I told them about this one either. James 1.25. There it is. You guys are good. Likewise also. Wait a minute. Is that the right one? No, that's not the right one. Did I say one? 1.25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. So this is not a, a one-time thing. Whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, 
but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Living a life of obedience to the words that come to you by the Spirit will bring blessing into your life. Mm. And blessing can mean a lot of things. A lot of things. Hallelujah. Matthew eleven twenty three. 23 and 24. And we know this, uh, this scripture because Pastor Mac teaches on this frequently. Brother Hagen, this, this is like his scripture for his ministry. When the Lord told him to go and teach my people faith, this became a foundational teaching for him, the scripture. All right, so Matthew eleven twenty three 23 says this. Look at how many times the word say or saith is repeated in this verse. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now notice this isn't a prayer to God. This is not a prayer. This is a law of faith. This is a spiritual law that works every time. And this is your responsibility. If you have a mountain in your life, it's not talking about a natural mountain, but it's talking about spiritual mountains, things that are preventing you from doing what you know God wants you to do. The enemy has come in and begun to interfere in your life. You've been given authority to remove that mountain. And if he's already given you the authority, he doesn't expect you to come and pray that he would remove it. It's your responsibility to remove the mountain, right? It's your responsibility to speak. Now notice here, the authority that he's given you, it's important that you understand who you are in Christ. That's another, totally another teaching, but if you don't know where he's given you authority, then you're never gonna use it. And it's in areas of your life that you don't use your authority where the enemy comes in and controls things. God wants you to use your authority to take control of your life and get it put on the course it needs to be and oriented toward fulfilling God's plan for your life. But you have to use your authority to do that. So how many times, oh, put that back up. We'll just leave that one up for a minute. How many times, for verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Four times it emphasizes the word say. You've got to speak out your faith in order for it to release the power and authority of God to change your life. And I'm not lying to you, this is true. This is the truth, right? <laughs> like Pastor Jim says, I'm not angry with you. <laughs> He's just passionate. But this is the truth. And yet so many Christians, they, they don't understand who they are in Christ. What God has given them that's not a part of the grace. He's given you authority. That's what he's given to you. You appropriate it by faith, but now you use it. You do it. You speak it. You use your faith to turn things in your life, to remove the spiritual hindrances, the mountains in your life. And sometimes he may not remove the mountain, he may let you go over the mountain or go around it. But either way, the mountain no longer has power in your life. You take authority over it. Amen. So let's go to the 24th verse. Now, it says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray. Now this isn't a faith declaration. This is a prayer. And it doesn't contradict verse 23. This is an area where you don't have authority. Right? Like you don't have authority over the president or those that 
that God has put or those that have been put into a place of authority. You're to be submitted to those that are in authority. But what do you do for them if you don't agree? You pray. So in areas where you have authority, you declare your faith. That's what's going to work. You don't pray and ask God to deal with the mountain because he'll never deal with the mountain. It's already dealt with in his mind. You declare the word of God. That means you have to be meditating on the word. You have to be confessing the word. So when the mountain arises in front of you, you've got something to resist it with. And you speak to the mountain and it'll be cast into the sea. It'll disappear. You'll have victory over that mountain. You become a winner like Pastor Max has been talking about for 35 years, 40 years, right? This is what he's been hammering into us week after week after week because his heart is that every one of us be victorious in every area of our life. All right, so we go back to this. This is talking about areas where you don't have authority. So in those areas you pray and it says this, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, not what God desires, but what you desire. Oh, I've got some things I desire about some of the people that are in positions of authority in our government. I'd like to speak some things out and declare some things, but <clears throat> that's why I pray. <laughs> so that I don't declare the wrong things. I pray the word of God over them that they would have the wisdom to make the right decisions that benefit the citizens of America. Right? We pray the word over them. We don't, we don't pray our feelings. Oh, sometimes I think we'd like to. God doesn't answer our feeling prayers. He answers the prayers that we, that we pray according to his word. His word is his will. And so we're praying his will over the people that stand in offices of authority. That involves the police, those that are, that are serving to protect us as citizens of our local community or our state, our nation. We pray for all these, our military. We pray for our military because they're in a position of authority to protect us from the enemies that rise up against this nation. We need to, to pray that they, they walk within the bloodline. They have the wisdom of God. No weapon formed against them will prosper. No evil shall befall them. Bless them, Lord. Give them favor. Give them clear understanding of every situation and circumstances that they enter into. Lead them and guide them by your spirit. Order their steps. Direct their paths. Keep them safe and secure from the enemy. That's the kind of thing you pray for people in authority. Amen. So under or using the spiritual law of faith to pray in areas where you don't have authority. And you know, sometimes you're in a situation you just don't even know what to pray. What do you do then? You know. That's why it tells us in, in, in Romans chapter 8, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness, in other words, our inability to really produce results because we don't even know what the heck's going on. How do you pray in situations where you don't know what to pray? The Holy Spirit helps you to pray the perfect will of God. So you pray in the Spirit, you hook up with the Spirit because the Spirit knows the will of God. He knows exactly what needs to be prayed at exactly the right time. You hook up in agreement with the Spirit, and guess what? We're to agree on earth. Is touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done. So as Christians, it's so important that we, we keep ourselves in this place. We're, we're situated, we're aligned with the Word of God, but we're spiritually positioned to accomplish things for the kingdom of God. It requires us developing faith in God through, through reading the Word renewing our mind to the Word of God. It involves confessing the Word. Oftentimes people pray and they don't see their answers, their answers come, and it's because they're not praying in faith, they're praying in unbelief. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss. In other words, you're asking about things that are not in line with the will of God. So He can't answer those prayers. 
So you get into the Word of God, find out why your prayers aren't being answered. See what the Word says about it. Meditate on that Word until, until that Word that you hope will be answered drops into your spirit and becomes faith. Faith and hope are different. Hope's always talking about the future. In Hebrews 11.1 1, it says, so now is faith. Faith is the answer to your, your problem now. So when you have someone pray for your healing, you exercise your faith to believe you receive it now. It's not to manifest a year from now. It's now. But if you can't, if you can't come to a place of faith, then you need to keep speaking it out. Keep hearing the word regarding that situation in your life. And keep meditating on it until it becomes, until you see yourself or observe yourself doing the word or receiving the manifestation of your prayer. You meditate on it. You confess it until you know it drops into your spirit so that you know when you speak out the word, it's going to be coming from a place of faith, not a place of hope. Does that make sense? Glory to God.